Hello, this is Nathan Ryan with Boris FX and Imagineer Systems, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Reframer effect to fix vertical cell phone footage. Reframer is one of several new plugins found in Boris Continuum Complete 10. Vertically recorded cell phone footage is being used more and more often on television. Amateur reporters can capture events even when professionals aren't around. This footage poses a problem since it leaves black bars on the left and right of the screen. Normally this type of footage would require multiple steps to correct, but Reframer is able to fix this footage in one easy-to-use filter. It also gives you tools for many different looks, including color correction, rotation, blurring, sharpening, mosaics, glows, and halftone, which is a sort of newsprint look. The effect I want to make today is a fairly simple, popular look. The foreground is centered vertically, aligned with the top and bottom, with a simple blur on the background. Now the first thing I'm going to do is import my footage. Now right here I'm using Avid Media Composer, and this process might work differently depending on which platform you're using, but otherwise the basics of the filter remain the same. Now I'm going to import my footage, I'm going to check my options here, and I want to make sure that I click Do Not Resize Smaller Images here because otherwise Avid might stretch out the footage to fill out the areas where the black bars are. Now I'm going to add my cell phone footage to a new sequence. Drop it in like that. And then in my effect palette, I'm going to go up to BCC Image Restoration, and then go to BCC Reframer, and drag that onto the clip. Now I'm going to go to Effects Mode, the first thing I want to do is get rid of these black bars on the left and right. So I'm going to go to Foreground Setup and adjust the Crop Source Width slider. Now I want to adjust the size of the foreground. I'm going to go to Foreground Transforms. These sliders affect the size of the image. Scale X stretches it horizontally and scale Y stretches it vertically, and I don't necessarily need to do that for this particular project, but I'm just going to use foreground scale master post. Now I want to sharpen this a little bit. I'm going to go to foreground effects and click foreground sharpen on. As you can see, these sliders can have a fairly dramatic effect on the image. I'd like to just make this kind of a subtle sharpening with a fairly small sharpen radius. It was a little bit cloudy this day and the footage is a little bit gray, so it could use a little bit of color correction. Make sure foreground color correction is on and adjust the foreground saturation. Give it a little more color and the brightness and the contrast. And it is worth noting that we also have access to a foreground drop shadow and that gives you kind of standard drop shadow type controls. That can be very useful for giving your foreground a little depth, but I'm not going to use it for this particular video. Now I'm going to work with the background a little bit. I think I'd like it to be a little bit bigger in the frame and a little bit brighter to more closely match our foreground. So under background transforms, we adjust background scale master. Now that we've fixed the size, I'd like to work on the look of the background. We have a number of different options besides blur. We have mosaic, glow, and halftone. But I want to stick with this simple blur. And again, these X and Y sliders can give you directional blurs, but we just want to add a uniform blur to the whole clip. Now I'd like the background to match the foreground a little bit more closely. And I'm going to turn color correction on. And just like we did with the foreground, I'm going to up the saturation, and the brightness, and the contrast. So now that I've got a look that I like, I'd like to save this as a preset so I can apply it easily to other clips. While I'm on this clip, I'm going to go up to our preset drop-down menu. I'm going to save this. I'm going to call it Lake. We're going to drop a second clip in to our sequence. 
and apply reframer again. Go to our effect editor and select load from the preset drop-down menu. There I'll find my preset lake. And as you can see, everything is as it should be. One note, the next time you start Media Composer, you'll see your preset in the drop-down menu. I think you'll agree that this footage looks much better than it did originally, especially when it's played on an HD TV. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial for Reframer. I'm Nathan Ryan for Boris Effects and Imagineer Systems. Bye-bye.